do it for the vine. Oof, that reference hasn't been relevant for at least five years, has it? Welcome back to my series, dot, 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 and pole dancing. Today we're gonna to talk about the world of social media and pole dancing. It's no secret that social media has taken over our lives and continues to play an ever-increasing role in how the world works with each passing day. As far as pole dancing goes, I found that aerial arts in general have skyrocketed in prominence on social media in the past few years. If you mention the phrase, aerial silks to somebody in, say, 2014, they probably wouldn't have any idea what you were talking about. But if you mention it now, they might be able to say, oh, I know that. Three of my favorite influencers just did an aerial silks challenge. Because pole has the distinction of being the aerial art most associated with sex work, for better or for worse, people have been familiar with it for longer. But it too has been riding the wave of aerial popularity lately, popping up more and more often. And not just on the pages of pole dancers. Big name celebrities like J Lo and Lil Nas X have had their share of fame and some notoriety for their forays into the pole world in just the past couple of years. So, pole dancing is in the public eye on social media, and it seems like it's here to stay. Until, suddenly, it's gone. Let's talk about the ever-encroaching trend of wiping pole dancers off the internet. I'm gonna break things down for us by platform, but before I can do that, I need to talk about two bills that were passed in 2018 in the United States. The Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, FOSTA, and the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, SESTA. The original purpose of FOSTA-SESTA was to catch online sex traffickers who were doing their business through sites like Backpage, but much like a carelessly woven net will catch any random fish in addition to its intended target, these bills are also snaring sex workers by the dozens. I need to back up a little bit to explain what being able to do sex work online means for people, as well as who ends up being the most affected. The more marginalized you are, the less likely it is you're able to obtain safe, steady, reliable income, and the more likely it is you might turn to a field like sex work. I'm gonna say this now because it's so important. Sex work is real work, it's done by consenting adults, and it is not the same as trafficking. An article on the PBS offshoot Y.org, written by Liz Tung, explains a little bit about why certain people turn to sex work. We found that 50% of our sample group had barriers to other forms of labor, sex worker and researcher Danielle Blunt said, and that the most common barriers were mental health diagnoses, chronic illness, and disability. What we found was that a lot of people were doing sex work because they had this diagnosis previously, Blunt said, and their mental health problems were making it difficult for them to hold a 9-to-5 job and that they needed flexibility to work around these issues. It's not just health problems that can prompt entry into the world of sex work. Gender and sexuality also play a role. An article on Out Alliance, written by Javi Mason, states, According to the 2015 U.S. Transgender Survey, 12% of trans adults have done sex work for income, and lifetime experience with sex work is higher among trans women of color, 42% of them engaging in sex work for income. The high percentages are the result of fewer resources being available for the trans community. Being queer also makes it more difficult to receive social services help, queer activist and sex worker Phoenix Kalita pointed out, Many orgs that are meant to help the poor, POC, sex workers, etc., are very religious in nature and turn away anyone who is LGBTQIA. A Vox article written by Anna North expands on this. Transgender sex workers, primarily black transgender sex workers, were already on the furthest parts of the margins, advocacy associate and sex worker Tamika Spellman said, experiencing high rates of homelessness, unemployment, and food insecurity. Black trans people in general are disproportionately likely to face employment discrimination, and with no federal law banning discrimination on the basis of gender identity, they often have little recourse. For some, the best or only option is sex work. And now, Spellman and others say that option is a lot more dangerous than it used to be. So how is FOSTA SESTA making sex work more dangerous? To paraphrase an article written for R Street by Daisy Soderberg Rivkin, because those who have previously enjoyed the benefits of using the internet to advertise their services, screen potential clients, share important information with other sex workers, and form communities, are now finding that access completely stripped away, including but not limited to losing their platforms entirely. The Y.org article continues, Over the past 20 years or so, that economy has increasingly migrated online. FOSTA-SESTA was an attempt to shut down the websites that facilitate trafficking, but sex workers say it's had the additional effect of putting their lives in danger by hobbling an online infrastructure they had come to depend on. Whenever we lose access to internet spaces, there has been a devastating effect on the community, Blunt said, and the community's ability to support themselves, to take care of themselves, to make money and to screen clients and stay safe. As Soderberg Rivkin puts it, 
Congress is targeting of online platforms involved with sex trafficking forced those platforms to take down any pages involving sex services, including those used for legal and consensual activity, out of fear of getting caught in a storm of lawsuits. So what exactly does this have to do with social media? Well, since the passage of those two bills, social media sites are now legally responsible for any potential sexual activities that occur on their apps, and to keep themselves out of hot water, they've had to implement some serious crackdowns. Let's see how that's affected pole dancers on Instagram. Shantae Joseph wrote an article for The Guardian that states, When it comes to nudity online, Instagram purports to have a seemingly straightforward policy. Its community guidelines state, Photos of post-mastectomy scarring and women actively breastfeeding are allowed. However, photos, videos, and some digitally created content that show sexual intercourse, genitals, and close-ups of fully nude buttocks are not. What many users don't know is that beyond the straightforward banning of nude images, Instagram utilizes this far murkier form of censorship for content that lies in a gray area it describes as being sexually suggestive. This murkiness comes in the form of a shadow ban, a tool that found Instagram at the center of a controversy with the pole dancing community in 2019. Shadow banning occurs when you are no longer showing up in the feeds of others on a particular site, but you haven't been taken entirely off the platform. You might find that nobody's able to see your posts, but you can still interact with others, or that only your current followers can see your stuff and no one new is being shown your posts. It presents in a variety of ways. In 2019, Instagram came under fire for shadow banning a huge amount of poll content and hashtags, including, but not limited to, poll routine, poll challenge, poll dancers of Instagram, and poll training, even going so far as to remove posts from the hashtag female fitness. I want you to consider this. Has the hashtag trapeze training ever been taken down off of Instagram? I think not! Also worth noting, at the time that Instagram and its parent company Facebook were hitting the shadow bans hardest, Hustlers, yes, the JLo movie I just made a video about, was in its PR heyday with promos and clips absolutely everywhere. As pole dancer and studio owner Amy Bond wrote for Medium, pop culture has decided it is okay to pretend to be a stripper, but real life strippers and recreational pole dancers and artists are forced to censor their art or promotional work in what, of late, feels like a Handmaid's Tale-esque like purge and censorship of real pole dancing. The blogger Sass and Clax points out that celebrity bodies are not held to the same standard. Clearly, if you're a public figure, you're well known, and you're not currently a sex worker, your body is fine on the gram. So did this get resolved? Well, sort of. Pole dancer Rachel Osborne created a change.org petition that received over 17,000 signatures and collaborated with other well-known figures in the pole community to draft a press release that they sent to Instagram in order to fight against the shadow ban. This effort led to an apology from Instagram and the reinstatement of the banned hashtags in question. But this doesn't mean that everything has been perfect for pole dancers on Instagram ever since. Instagram's public apology didn't fix their filters that catch supposed sexual content, which are run by an AI, and many pole dancers have resorted to covering up more in order to slip through the filter, no matter if their content was suggestive or not. As Jenny Hedger wrote in an article titled, Dear Instagram, My Body Is Not Inappropriate, Mostly I feel angry. I also feel ashamed for wanting to wear grippy leggings in every video to avoid being shadow banned. I feel dejected thinking about all the hard work I've put into a trick or a video knowing that it'll disappear into the void. By specifically targeting women, the algorithm, and by extension, Instagram, is literally telling me that my skin is inappropriate, that wearing a bikini, the thing that literally every women's magazine in the grocery store tells us we should aspire to be wearing, is offensive. Shantae Joseph's article echoes this sentiment. The vagueness of Instagram's shadow banning policy leaves users confused as to what is and isn't appropriate. Salty, an online newsletter and platform for women, trans, and non-binary people, released new research last month that looked at the ways that algorithms affect marginalized groups, concluding that plus-sized profiles were often flagged for excessive nudity and sexual solicitation, and that queer people and women of color are policed far more than their white, straight, cis counterparts. When images of fully clothed, plus-sized, or black women are removed for being inappropriate, the platform's AI learns to adopt biases that reinforce misogyny and racism, creating barriers for certain groups in the digital realm. Before we move on from Instagram, there is one more controversy I want to discuss, the use of the hashtag not a stripper. As we know, pole dancing is inexorably linked to stripping, which you know if you watched my sexuality and pole dancing video. Some pole dancers resent that connection, so they've taken to their hashtags in order to set themselves apart from those they view as 
lower than them for using pole dancing as part of a stripping routine or for sex work. From an article excellently titled The Christopher Columbusing of the Pole World, I found this. Samantha Don Martin said in a Facebook thread that by reacting with hashtag not a stripper, you are instead just saying disrespect the other woman, not me. You should have a problem with the stigma against sex workers because that affects all women who choose to do anything with their bodies outside of what society deems important. If you've ever used the hashtag not a stripper, I'm going to kindly ask you to stop. No, pole dancing and stripping are not the same, and yes, I know you're not a stripper. But as that article states, we don't need to elevate ourselves by lowering someone else who uses the pole in a different way. Sorry. To wrap up this Instagram segment, I want to share a Bustle article written by Paula Akpan featuring a quote from pole dancer and PhD Carolina R. And remember that name, because she's about to come up a lot. Speaking about what can be done, Dr. R says, people need to get behind this and not just minorities. It's not just about pole dancers. It's about how a handful of companies with a huge monopoly over content, over information, over our data, over what's published are getting to decide what's appropriate to be shared. Now let's TikTok about one of the most TikToksic places on the internet. TikTok. I have to admit a bias here. I've never used TikTok and I personally find it terrifying, but it's probably the most popular social media at the moment, and pole dancers are on the platform, so it belongs in our discussion. Dr. Carolina R. laid out TikTok's community guidelines that can lead to a ban. Content that explicitly or implicitly depicts sexual activities, including penetrative and non-penetrative sex, oral sex or erotic kissing, content that depicts sexual arousal or sexual stimulation, content that depicts a sexual fetish, content that depicts exposed human genitalia, female nipples or areola, pubic regions or buttocks, content that contains sexually explicit language for sexual gratification. TikTok, like Instagram and all other forms of social media, is now beholden to the same standards to avoid legal snares related to FOSTA-SESTA. However, Dr. R found that TikTok is an even worse place for pole dancers than Instagram, stating that they implement a ban first, ask questions later approach, and even appeals are less consistent than the already quite confusing Instagram governance. How does Dr. R know so much about getting banned from TikTok for pole dancing? Because she was. The kicker? She got her PhD in how social media silences women. When she received her PhD, Dr. R posted a video of herself dancing to WAP to celebrate. I should mention something about how TikTok works here. While Instagram does offer an explore page, its main focus is in showing you posts from people that you have chosen to follow on your main feed. TikTok's MO is the opposite. With its emphasis on the For You page, it shows you content that is supposedly curated for you, but can also throw content at you that you never searched for or consented to see. So if for some reason you hate pole dancing, you might find yourself faced with a pole dancer gyrating around to WAP and feel righteously ticked off. An article on Input Mag laid out what happened to Dr. R because of this. I received a lot of trolling as a result, she says. The users who disliked her content began reporting many of R's videos, which TikTok's content moderation system removed for community guidelines violations and adult nudity and sexual activity. R wears clothes while pole dancing. The reports of community violations on her videos seem to have triggered an automatic suspension of her account, preventing her from posting any new clips. To avoid detection from the content moderation system, some people have gone to creative lengths, like in this video from Devin Lytle where she green screens out her poll to see if she can sneak through the censors. What happens when I take the poll completely out of the equation? What if I just fly, bitch? Level four, sky bitch. But creators on TikTok aren't just finding that it's their content that gets them banned, what they do off the app has also started to affect them. We're going to talk about OnlyFans, which means a caveat is in order. No, not every pole dancer has or wants an OnlyFans page, but what we're not going to do on this channel is shame those who do have them. Many creators on TikTok are also creators on OnlyFans, and linking your OF to your TT used to be a great way to drum up new clients, because if someone follows you on TikTok, they might be more likely to pay for your content on OnlyFans. Creators nowadays, however, are often waking up to find their entire TikTok account removed because they linked to their OnlyFans at all, even if they did jump through some sneaky hoops. 
A Rolling Stone article written by E.J. Dixon lays it out like this. But not everyone who has an OnlyFans uses it to post sexual content, and most of the creators Rolling Stone spoke with said they didn't even directly link to their OnlyFans in their bios, instead posting their Linktree, a third-party app that allows creators to post links to all of their social platforms. Further, many mainstream creators on TikTok post links to their OnlyFans in their bios, including people like Bella Thorne. It is well known on the platform that TikTok, which has a large user base under the age of 18, will remove videos that contain references to sex work or OnlyFans, leading to creators coming up with clever ways to circumvent their content moderation policies. Accountant TikTok, or sex workers sardonically claiming that they are accountants while showing off their OnlyFans earnings, is a prime example of this. What do you do? I'm an accountant. Amberly Rothfield, an adult content creator and adult marketing educator, says that in the wake of the TikTok purge, it is becoming common knowledge that TikTok is very anti-adult, and that the platform will delete your account if adult sites are linked to your bio. They are really going ham on not allowing mention of OnlyFans, she says. So, Instagram could shadow ban you for using a hashtag or punish you for not pole dancing and leggings. TikTok could shove your content in the faces of those who will flag you and get you booted from the platform, unless the platform beats them to it and bans you for linking to an OnlyFans. What about YouTube? Truth be told, YouTube is a bit murky to me, even though it is obviously the social media site that I use most prominently, but I do want to point something out. I received a comment on one of my videos telling me that I often dress more practical than sexy, which... thanks? <laughs> But also, that's on purpose. Remember the Sass and Clax post where she mentions that celebrity bodies are not held to the same standards as, say, someone like you or I? Take, for example, the JLo routine from Hustlers that I just recreated. In the clip from Hustlers that I shared, JLo is wearing what I affectionately termed floss. Her whole cheeks are out. The clip was directly from Universal's YouTube page and is age-restricted, but is available to anyone to see on YouTube if they just tell the internet they're 18. Because it's J-Lo. How are you going to tell J-Lo she can't have her ass out on the internet? I'm not actually sure what trips YouTube's decency censors. Sorry. If I were to show up in a thong like J-Lo's, would I be flagged for sexual content? I don't know where the line is, and for that reason, I'd rather not even get close to walking it. More practical than sexy, indeed. Speaking of comments, that's actually what I'd like to talk about for our last segment. I've gotten a few uncomfortable comments in my day, and sometimes when I share them with others, I get this response. Well, what did you expect after posting something like that? Which like, yes, but also no. Okay, pole dancers have to wear minimal clothing. Yes, we notice. Pole dancing is associated with being sexy. I'm putting myself out there in the world in these skimpy outfits. Yes, I know people are weirdos and people are gonna make comments and the world is not full of people who will not objectify you as much as I wish it was. So this side of me is telling you that if you are a pole dancer who posts your content on social media and you make it through the censorships and bans, that you might have to grow some thick skin and deal with some uncomfortable comments. But this other, much louder side of me is telling you to forget that noise. Just because your sport requires you to have your skin out does not mean that you need to tolerate creeps. If someone is making you uncomfortable, I'm giving you permission right now to delete their comments, block them, call them out. I don't care if it makes us not nice. I don't care if we should expect weird comments to come. If someone isn't leaving a comment like that under a picture of a trapeze artist, I don't see why they should have any right to leave a comment like that under your picture just because you pole dance. And I wrote this paragraph ahead of time so I wouldn't genuinely get angry, and yet I still did. <laughs> Okay, I'm calm now, and I'm quiet. But if you're not a pole dancer, hear me. You absolutely can leave a pole dancer a compliment on social media. But if at any point you think to yourself, my mother would be ashamed of me if she saw me writing this, I'm gonna need you to hit that delete button. And I can hear some of you asking, why keep even posting on social media if it's gonna be all this trouble? Because pole dancing is what we love. A baker wants to share his cake recipes, an ice dancer wants to share her new trick that she learned, a model wants to share their outfit of the day, and we want to share our passion too, and we are all equally valid in wanting to do so. Pole dancing is not something to be ashamed of. We want to celebrate. We want to be able to make connections and sometimes money. We want to be seen. So here we are. And where are we? Hell, mostly. 
but it's not all bad. When pole dancers and by extension sex workers are allowed to exist on social media, they can thrive. You can find some absolutely incredible inspiration online and make a wonderful pole community for yourself. You can watch a long ass video from your favorite pole creator and give her a big thumbs up and a juicy comment. But this subject is so complicated, so I recommend three things. One, don't you use that hashtag not a stripper. Two, if someone is making you uncomfortable in your comments, be bold, delete them, call them out. Three, keep standing in solidarity with sex workers and keep up to date with things like petitions and information about FOSTA-SESTA. I'll leave us with this comment from Dr. Carolina R. So if you think that censorship of sex work doesn't touch you, think again. My experiences of pole dancing on TikTok will hit average users sooner or later, just like censorship of sex work is trickling down to pole dancers. In short, a safer, more inclusive social media space for sex workers means a safer, more inclusive space for everyone. So you should care about censorship, whether it's of sex workers, of pole dancers, or of more safe for work accounts. She's right. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go respond to some comments.